Hi, my name is Lorraine of District 32 and I have the absolute pleasure of having a conversation today with Nick Vig of Leap Resourcing. How are you, Nick? I'm fantastic. Looking forward to Christmas holidays, um, as are a lot of my clients, which I'm really <laughs> enjoying. Not together, but, you know. Yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> and that's what we enable, so... And you do, and I want to talk to you about that. So look, um, just to frame this uh, conversation, this conversation is around um, outsourcing, using an outsourcing agency, and a common um, concern around people, you know, working with uh, outsourced employees is that the fear of the loss of control or management of that area. So we're going to deep dive in that uh, today to help business owners, you know, enable um, that decision making. So Nick, first of all, Tell me about Leap, Re Leap Resourcing. Well, we're a full-service um, outsourcing agency, a BA agency. Um, I've got a fabulous, I've got 75 wonderful staff in the Philippines that are part of our extended family uh, and many, many happy clients that you know, our staff make a fantastic uh, difference in their business lives every day. Um, and what I was saying about all going on holiday is, is our clients can all go on holiday because they've got a fantastic team uh, running the essentials of their business so they don't have to answer emails or their phone on the beach this Christmas. So um, <laughs> I'm about right. to go away and I know many of my clients, some of them are having their first holiday they've had since uh, since they've been in business, which is exciting. Wow. So Nick, before I deep dive into the more of that, um, you know, the the management side of things, what made, what, what, what you started with Leap Resourcing? Where did it all begin? So I've been in, I've been in business for a number, for about eight years now. And um, I've got a phone and internet business as well, which I've had for quite a long time. A lot of my staff are in the Philippines who are involved in that. Uh, and my clients came to me and said, look, your staff are amazing. They can talk about footy and cricket. I didn't even realize they were overseas. It was a completely different experience to what they're used to when they're calling through a call center, say for a big phone company or, or any business where you're calling an offshore call center. They were just surprised by the the, the, the level of skill of my staff. And um a lot of my clients were asking me to source them staff in the Philippines. I said, no, that's not what I do. Um, but I have I have worked in HR in the past and I've got a lot of partners in HR. So I, I really wanted to provide, we looked at doing it as a business, and I, but I wanted to provide that support at the start. It, it, there's not much point in just saying, here, here's someone in another country, go go work with it, go work, go deal with it, deal with the situation. You've got no experience, no one on the ground there. Um, a lot of a lot of people, business owners, don't know what to outsource, what's feasible. Um, so by providing an agency where we provide the staff, but we also provide that support along the way and, and, and make sure it's targeted to their business. And that's the secret to uh, getting the most out of an outsourcing arrangement. Beautiful. Yeah. Thank you. And you are helping an awful lot of people um, around the network and here locally in Perth and beyond. So you really are making that difference. Um, and I hear that, you. you know, I hear those stories. Yeah, so I'm, I'm not great. waffling here. You know, I'm actually I'm speaking from the horse's mouth. So, Nick, I wanted to um, just home in on one particular point today. And that was around, you know, the fear of the unknown when working with an employee who's not really your own employee yeah. you know so and people have got fear around you know the just the control about that do you want to talk to me about that what are the fears that come up what are the questions that business owners um ask you and then how can you um you know put us give us some peace of mind around that well i mean all all, all business is about risk if it wasn't about risk and we had to take calculated risks we wouldn't be in business we'd be working with someone else on salary so we've made that first jump um it's a fair concern that business owners have about outsourcing and having staff in somewhere where you can't physically walk over to their desk and say hello, um, the, that, that's a concern. It's a valid concern. It's one that I had when I first started. Um, one of the important things is having people on the ground that understand the culture, understand all the different um, peculiarities and customs and things. Every country is different. And within the Philippines, certainly there's, there's hundreds of different um, sub-nations, tribes, ethnic groups. So everybody is slightly different. And being a Kiwi, we're very much the same um, but in many ways. But it's about understanding people. It's about having a common language in the way that you communicate. People having a culture where people, um, you know, are comfortable to come to you and tell you bad news. I would always rather hear bad news um, rather than no news. And, and having the expectations uh, set at the start, that culturally those are the important things. Um, you've got to have your security processes down packed. So you need to have 
um, qualified staff who can do vetting, you're checking police databases, you're doing proper reference checks. Uh, I'm always alarmed by the amount of people that don't bother calling references um, and actually check that it's someone's boss, not their mum on the end of the phone. Um, <laughs> so it's 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 doing your due, due diligence. It's, it's running a proper police check. It's um, also when we do interviews, I do proper structured interviews um, in HR. We all know that the best indicator of future performance is past performance. So if you've been a fantastic salesperson, it's probably likely you've you're going to be a good salesperson in, in the future. But if you've just burnt out and left the job, and that's why we want to know that. So it's about asking the right questions. It's ask, about asking people to demonstrate that they can do what they say they can do. I'm looking for examples of that. Um, and we have a very low turnover rate for that reason. We do all that work at the start. Um, with business owners as well, controls are always a concern. It, it's about um, showing them the light and the systems and how to delegate work. Um, what to start. And we do we do a 12-week onboarding program where we show them the ropes about what you want to start doing. You don't want to hand over your entire inbox for them to answer straight away, uh, but you want to be showing, spending time each day in the first week, showing them the kind of emails that come in and, and the type of queries and, and spotting trends and then discussing how we might handle different queries and the way that we talk and those sort of things. So that, you know, by the end of week two, they can start actually drafting emails to clients on your behalf, and then you just check them. But it's all about coaching. It's all about sitting down and saying, hey, look, this is actually more what I would say, and just providing them that feedback. That's how people grow. Uh, so we provide that system where we say, look, week one, these are the kind of things you can get your staff to do. By week 12, you'll be handling and getting handing over more advanced tasks to them. Um, but there's some things you do yourself, like I do the payroll. I pay everything out of my own bank account. I don't have staff doing that. So there's, there's, there's a list of things you'll get them to do. Uh, and it's also some of those things um, you'll want to have control over. So maybe the staff will do 70% of a task and then you'll finish it off or you'll sign off on it or make slight adjustments. So that way you've got that control. Um, one thing I find is clients either want to give the whole of the task to a VA or they give none of it. Now, the none of it is the problem uh, because a lot of things like research and drafting and and, and, and a lot of that the staff can do. And then I, I come in at the end, like with my social media posts, uh, Trixie, my EA, she'll send me uh, like screens and screens, uh, screenshots of all the different posts for the month. I'll read through them and give her feedback. So I'm not giving her free open slather to write whatever she wants. Um, we've got a, our marketing agency's given us a brief and she's gone and interpreted that brief. We've talked about the different themes and then I oversee that. So I still have that control of what goes out. Um, and that's important. So, yeah. You need to be across everything, but not the fine, fine detail. Yeah, okay. And so how do, when you're working with an agency, then you obviously manage. So if I was hiring someone through yourself, um, like I would still manage the staff member. I would still manage the HR and any leave and any um, stuff like that. Or do you handle some of that? How much involvement does the agency have when a, a, a VA is on board? So it's a bit like attending agency in that we deal with any annual leave, any employment problems, okay. um, any of the HR stuff we deal with. Um, you would be managing them day to day. Over the first three months, we're, we're very involved in the day to day because we're getting that. We want you to come together with the um, with the VA and, and be integrated as fast as possible. And that's the way, excuse me, that's the way we see the results and growth is if we help at the start, getting you accustomed to each other and just dealing with any communication issues or teething issues, the whole thing soars really quickly. Uh, we catch up with you on a regular basis to do performance reviews and look at how your business is shaping because not only is will the, the VA be progressing through their career with you and learning new tasks and needing adjustments as we go, your business needs will change. So you might be starting to go, um, you know, I had a client who's a bookkeeper and she's sort of gone in the direction of NDIS work as well. That's another big chunk of her business. So we had a meeting to sit down and say, okay, well, this is the new kind of direction. Not the whole business is going in that direction, but part of it. How do we adjust what we're doing with our resources to, to support you as business changes? Because we know business changes, it's inevitable. So it's an ongoing support thing. Um, when you'd be dealing with the day-to-day -day support and management of your staff, but we're here as the agency, you can call us and say, hey, look, I, I don't think my VA is really understanding the creative briefs I'm giving them for marketing. What can I do? And 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 we'll have a look at it. Maybe we'll have a chat to them and, and sort of patch that. Often it's a communication issue or it's an issue about the way the client explains something 
or, or we have it. We, we sort of there to sort of patch, patch everything together and make sure it, everyone goes off on their way successfully. So it's a yeah, it's an ongoing relationship. So thank you, and like so that really makes things clear for me. You know, it's it's it's, it's um a lot of massive amounts of support in that first three months. So you really remove the risk for any business owner. If there's any issues with employee, you know, you'll, you'll, you'll manage it for them. If someone's not quite working out, I'm assuming that you would help them to remove that person or bring somebody else in. The um, big thing at the start is, is understanding the client, who they are as a person. We all, we're all different animals. We've all got our different peculiarities. We either like doing some things. Maybe we don't like explaining things properly. Some people are terrible wafflers or bad communicators. <laughs> if we know this, we know what we're working with. Yeah. You know, and that, that that's fine because we've all got problems. We're all different people, right? Let's just be honest about who we are. And we'll make sure we have a staff member that 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 is is a good fit within that operation. Um a lot of the time we don't we very rarely have issues with VAs. Uh we pick things up pretty quick if we do. Um but most of the time we have an issue with it's with the client actually. And I, I <laughs> like, hey, can you return your staff's emails? Your VA has been trying to call you for two days. Yeah, yeah. I'm answering, like, are you busy? Are you okay? Yeah, I'm just flat out like, okay, can you schedule an hour each day over the first two weeks? Because you've got to give them the time so that they, you know, and yeah. I'm happy to have those that conversation with clients. And sometimes I end up helping, like, oh, okay, well, let's sit down together yeah. and work something out. And that's what I love doing. I love the consulting. Um, and I love seeing the growth that comes from it. That's, that's what mm. gets us out of bed in the morning. It is. I mean, that really enables us. Having staff is the only way we can grow. We can't do it um, by ourselves. And this is a really um, safe bet, you know, rather than going straight out to the market here or wherever you are and employing somebody on, you know, $80,000 a year to come and sit in your office. Um, yeah. Also, let me just answer some of the suspicion going on in my mind, Ed, because I've, I've got the question, I'm sure other people have as well. So, you know, how do you, how do you make sure that, how do you make sure that you're getting the maximum productivity? from a VA how do you know they're working all the time how do you know you're not paying you know for 40 hours a week and you're getting 20 do you help with that sort of thing as well do you okay yeah yeah absolutely do so on a very rudimentary level it's based on output you know you look at how much time things took you to do previously and you look at what's been output the output is that's the simplest way to tell but we, we've got monitoring software on the computer, the computers and things to see keystrokes and all that too. Um, okay. We we very rarely need to look at that though because the output from the staff matches what our expectations are. Yeah. Me and my team are, are, are seasoned at doing this. We know what's reasonable and what how long things should take. And, and the clients do too because a lot of it is their work that they're taking over. So we, we meet frequently and we look at the work output and what should be done Um but again, I can see calls going out on the phone system that we provide people. We can see activity on the computers. So we know we know if they're working, we know if they're at the beach. Um, my staff are pretty, uh, my management team in the Philippines are amazing. I've got five, five of my team who are our management team. They're all uh, skilled HR practitioners. Uh, Hector's run call centers for Telstra for years. And he... Wow. He's amazing at fishing out problems and and, and knowing um, he's very intuitive. He knows when someone's got a problem or there's a family issue and he's in there sorting it straight away. So we uh, we have good relationships with our team, but we also have the technology and processes there to make sure that everything's ticking over. People are doing the work uh, and we know how to have tough conversations with them if, if that's not happening. Uh, and we'll go down the performance management route. But again, if people are happy in their work, if they're happy with the client, happy with us, it's, you know, pe people don't usually, um, they don't play up or or, yeah. or abscond from work. They're generally happy. And we're pretty easy, but we've got a really family-friendly policy. If if your child's sick or grandma's ill, sure, take some time off. We're, we're very flexible with that. That makes a huge difference, especially when it mm. comes to the respect relationship between employee and client. So, yeah, Mike, you've answered a lot of um, questions I had, and as I said earlier, you know, I've got them so as more so of other people. Um, yeah. got them. I think from our discussion, it just sounds, you know, the risk is removed. You help to do the training, the onboarding, the recruiting, the HR, um, for yeah, a fraction of the cost than we usually would. Um, this allows a really safe way to transition and through those growing pains, uh, yes. you know, for the business owner. Um, Look, nothing's no risk. I'll, I'll highlight that now. I'm very oh, yeah. straight. Nothing's no risk. 
But we, we do a lot of work um, to mitigate that risk at the start. We're insured and everything. So it's it's doing everything possible. Much less risk than it would be for a business owner going out and doing it in the morning. Blind is the word. Blind yeah. is the word. I wouldn't write my own contracts. I wouldn't go to court no. without representation. I wouldn't be doing my own tax. I've got to account it for that. Yeah. I pay a lot, <laughs> uh, but it's it's you know it's peace of mind, and that's the most important thing. You know, let us work okay. for you. Nick Beg, thank you very much for your introduction. I look forward to doing more uh, videos and answering more questions for the business community um, throughout 2023. Thank you very much for your thank time you today. Thanks, Lorraine, and uh, try and keep put your feet up a little bit. Try and. Uh, yeah. D32 network off for a little bit and have a bit of rest and recuperate. And the same to yourself, Nick. I'll speak to you soon. Thank you very much for sharing your time. Bye. Bye. Bye.